by definition, chip shot is a low running shot. Okay. Pitching is a okay. higher trajectory shot. So, but you know, like you said, usually that works out that when you're closer, you chip. When you're further back, you're pitch. But theoretically, you could be closer and need some height, or you could be further back and decide to run it. Okay. And the distinction, you know, is I think important simply because the technique for chipping when you're trying to hit it low is the polar opposite of the technique for pitching when you're trying to hit it high. Okay. Um, probably 75% of the time you're going to end up chipping or you should end up chipping. It's a much safer <laughs> shot. Um, and as a rule of thumb, only when you really have to go up and over something would you want to pitch. Okay. Um, and the terminology is obviously just kind of what it's called and what makes this sometimes complicated is that we're going to start with chipping but we're going to chip with your pitching wedge which makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. Now that you explain it like that, like when I've been practicing around the greens I've been taking my 56 and an 8 and really just from different lies you know, trying to see him with the eight being a little bit more of a chip while the pitching wedge or the 56, but getting it up and yep. stuff. Yep, so. yep, yep. So it sounds like you're on the right track. Okay, let's, uh, if I can take your pitching wedge there okay. for a second. So the easiest way I think of explaining chipping and pitching is kind of through where we want the club at impact. And when we're chipping, we want the club swinging down and into the back of the ball so you can see when I do that the shaft is leaning forwards yep. and even though this is a pitching wedge I'm de-lofting the club face which means that the ball is going to come out lower so when I set up I'm going to set up really trying to replicate that impact so I'm going to play the ball back in my stance I'm going to lean to the left hands to the left I'm choking down so I can stand a little closer to the ball. Then I'm going to keep my legs really still. And then because of how I'm leaning, as I take the club back, it should have very much an up and down motion to it. So I'm going to be able to hit the ball on the downswing and get a descending strike on it. So then it just kind of skips and runs out. Okay, so there's no wrists with this shot. It's just the arms swinging the club up and down in a okay. straight line, okay? Uh, I think with this shot, the setup is kind of, if you can get the setup right, you're 50% there. That's good, hold it there. And I'm just going to push a little bit and just get the to the left side. Yeah, we can work, try the game. That's the right, technically that's great. Now just try and... Just need to get that speed up. <laughs> yeah. Good. Great. Shot hard. Um, so that shot right there obviously wasn't perfect, but right. that's also one of the great benefits of a chip, is that when you miss hit, the results still tend to be It's not. Decent. It's not quite as... Uh, out there. Yeah, and that downward strike that you get when you chip, if you can imagine the ball sitting in longer grass or a bad lie, that downward strike helps get the leading edge into the back of the ball, um, which is going to enable you to make a good strike. If it's more shallow, then that longer grass gets in the way. I like to think of chipping and putting as, you know, there's more similarities between those two as you know, chipping and pitching, chipping and, and swing. So they're quite good to go over together. Um, and then we'll do a bit of practice with your putting. Um, and then a really good way of practicing short game is just with three balls, chipping to one hole, trying to get one out of three up and down. So um, instead of, you know, standing and hitting the same shot, really try and vary it up as much as possible. All right, let's see three putts to that flag stick right there. Yeah. 
right, that's good. Just a couple of things we're going to go over. One is the grip. Okay. Um, you you have a modified, you know, grip compared to your normal um, tin grip, which is good. I want you to just experiment with taking off your glove. Oh, okay. You got a little part. <laughs> uh, that's the one thing I always forget to do is take off the glove. And then just put your hands on the club like you normally would. Then separate your hands. So kind of pull your right hand lower. And then this top hand, just kind of lift this top hand like that. Now slide your lower hand up. Yeah. And then put that finger down the outside. So that's a traditional heading grip. It's called a reverse overlap grip, where you're putting that finger down the outside of the lower hand fingers. The point being to try and eliminate any kind of wrist. Okay. My favorite pun and grip is actually when you just put your left hand below the right hand. Yep, because that tends to help keep the shoulders square and it really stops the wrist. The strike that we're trying to get when when we putt is to hit the ball very slightly on the upswing. And so to do that, then the ball position should just be a little bit to the left of center in your stance so that you can hit it on the upswing and get a really nice roll. All right, so lastly, um, a great drill for you to do. Um, so putting is all about getting the right speed. Um, Yes, of course, direction is important too, but of those two variables, I would always try and focus on speed so that um, if you miss a hole, which statistically we're going to most of the time, then the next one's a no-brainer. Um, and a really good drill that you can do with that is three balls. First ball, you're going to hit it about 10 to 12 feet. You're not going to hit it at a hole, you're just going to hit it kind of then the second cut you're going to hit it past the first ball within two feet the third cut past the second ball within two feet so you're getting this kind of leapfrog type effect so you're not going to be focusing on any kind of direction you're only going to be focusing on your distance as well so you're all right, so now your goal is past that one within two feet. Okay. Huh? That going. Nope. All right, everything we've done, we chip in and put in. Forget. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this one, if we start with the strike backwards, then this is the banks of the club here. Mm -hmm. So at impact, we're trying to get the banks of the club bouncing on the ground, hence the name. Yep. So in order for the, the banks of the club to hit the ground, the shaft has to be either straight up. It, if it goes forward, then you can see we're getting more into a yep, chipping technique yeah. and closing it. Yep, so um, setting up with the shaft kind of at the center of the body. This time, the ball position is also gonna be center of your feet so that you can maximize the oh, no, loft on no, the club. No, no, if I had no. a really, if I had a shot where I really had to get the ball moving up fast, yeah. I would move the ball position a little forward in my stance, which then essentially makes the shaft angle backwards, which adds more loft onto the face. But, yeah, that's somewhat extreme. Okay, so this is more like your regular swing. S certainly the stance, you know, you're bending from your hips. The shaft is pointing at the center of your body. And your cues here are that as you take the club back, your wrists are hinging up so that the toe of the club points up towards the sky. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the front or leading edge is perpendicular to the ground, that's square. It's like this, it's closed. So toe up on the back swing, feel that the club is bouncing on the ground as it goes through. And then at the end of your swing, just trying to hold the face open a little bit at the end. It should be primarily with the arms and the, 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 the wrists. 
but because the swing can get quite big with this shot, then if there's a need for the body to kind of move with the arms and let it, so we're not kind of locking it down. Okay. Good. Really good. That's a great shot. Everything you were doing over there with pitching, this is basically the same shot. Okay. The difference obviously is the ball is on sand instead of the grass. Um, a good visual, I think, is imagine a rectangle about the size of a dollar bill and you're trying to get the bounce just sliding across that dollar bill. So again, you're trying to maximize the loft on the face by getting the back of the club hitting the sand. Okay. Uh, and yep, you're trying to get the back of the club hidden in the right place there. Yep. Yep, so that club's just skimming, sliding yeah, that underneath. Yeah, definitely actually felt like dug in a little bit more. Oh, did it? Okay, yeah. yeah. So the, the divot should be nice and shallow with the club just yeah, that skimming. <laughs> nice. That I like that strike. Better. Did that feel a little more shallow? Yeah, that one, that one definitely felt shallower and even just looking at the two, it's definitely shallower. Yeah. And when you get the face open, when you get the toe up in the back swing, it's easier for the club to slide under the ball. If it's closed, it's easier for that leading edge yeah. to dig. Yep. That sounded right. So that kind of slappy yeah. sound. That one, was that good. one felt better. Like I definitely, when you're looking at it, I'm hitting near the back of my, you know rectangle there yeah but definitely um digging in more as i go forward yeah but that's like after the ball and stuff so yeah um another great exercise actually I'm going to pop yep. um, is just drawing a line in the sand so draw a line in the sand so what you're trying to do with this exercise is get the bounce of the club on that line okay so you're looking for divots that just kind of bridge that line so my first one i liked the second one Start that was too early yeah, okay. um so i want the so that's good there so it's kind of right over that line just to give you some feedback about where your club is hitting 